Hey guys, Justin here from First Updates Now. I'm checking in with 4451 Robots Garage in the coolest pit in FRC by far. I've got Owen, Colt, Lewis, and Willem here to tell us a little bit about interpolation, uh, vision, assisted rotation correction. Yes. And Owen's gonna talk to us a little bit about their uh, climber and amp and trap mechanism. Check that all out here on Behind the Bumpers. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button on any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, so I'm gonna hand it off to Owen. He's gonna get us started with the amp and trap elevator. Thank you, Justin. So this is our robot from 2024. This is Ember. Um, and we have an elevator on the back here, which functions as our amp mechanism and our trap mechanism. So basically it's a single Falcon on this hex shaft right here and this cord connected to it, which we just run it one way and it goes up and we run it the other way and it goes down, pretty simple. So I'm gonna showcase right now the amp. So I hold one button, it goes up, and I hold another and then the pivot goes up. And when we have a note in there, I hold a different button and it fires it, it goes through. So this is all in one system and I can also bring it higher with a different button for the trap. So we can put a note in there and showcase. Come on, Willem. We also have the blinky lights to show that we got it in there. Pretty cool. So this whole thing is like the hopper, the shooter, all yes, that? pretty much. We don't, in a game, we're not gonna push it in through the front. Right, but right. Yeah. So the intake's on the, under yeah, the bumper in the back? The so, you hold B, and then RB to go up, and then, boom, it goes right out the back. It's really fast, so. Yes. It's very quick. All right. That's really all there is to it. It's pretty simple. Um, you say it's kind of like the same thing for the trap. You just climb and do that. Yeah, yeah. So it just goes, the elevator goes to a different height for the mechanism. Awesome. So I see you guys have like, how many cameras do you say? You have five cameras on this yes, robot? we have five cameras. All right, so let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I'll hand what it off got to uh, Lewis and Cole here. Hey, I'm Cole. So on our robot, we have five cameras. Four of them detect April tags to help us determine our position on the field relative to those April tags located here, here, and then we have two on the back. And then another one on our elevator actually detects the notes. So it uses a neural net algorithm to detect the notes on the ground. And then our driver has a button that aims toward it. And then he can just drive towards the note without having to actually see it himself. And another way we use vision is with interpolation. So because we track our position on the field, we track how close we are to the speaker because that's a known position. And then once we're within our range, we use this vision to determine how far away we are and then angle this pivot the correct angle based on our distance. So if we're really close, it'll angle higher. And then as we go back, it'll slowly angle itself down. It's happening like live during the match. You don't have to do anything to make it happen. Our operator has a button. He presses the button and then it interpolates. It just does its thing. He doesn't have to worry about it. Another way we use vision is an auto, but I'm going to hand that off to Lewis to talk about. So in our autos, we use what we are, what we fondly refer to as a VARC, which is a vision assisted rotation correction. So what that does is that lets us use these cameras to figure out where to aim at. So for example, in our autonomous, when we're coming back to shoot, we use we use VARC to aim at the speaker. So that way, even if our whatever's off, we always know where the speaker is, so we'll always be aiming at the same spot. We also have use this object detection camera back here to use a mark for aiming at notes. So even if a note is off physically on the field, we can still find the right target and drive into that and find that. I'm Willem. So I guess we get to talk about advantage scope now. So um, during matches, we have a USB stick somewhere in there. I can't find it right now, but um, that's where we record all of our logs using advantage scope into that so when it we take the usb stick out every match and we plug it into the computer and we can read back those logs that was owen moving the thing earlier so we record this we record all the april tag stuff we can record if they're actually connected or if they're not which really helped us a couple matches ago when our 
orange pies, um, the buck converter for the orange pies kept browning out, so no cameras. And that was a big problem because we used cameras for interpolation, like we said, and then we couldn't shoot. But after the match, we saw that and we got new buck converters, which can go down to a lower voltage. And now works a lot better. So when the drivers come back from the match and they say, oh yeah, I totally did the thing. You can be like, nah, -uh. Yeah, that, that's what actually happened. Yeah, <laughs> so, so I saw you guys messing with some of the um, simulations yeah. up on the screen. You want to talk about that a little bit? Okay. So, all right. So we have a simulation set up. So what we can do is we can write all of our mechanisms for the robot and all of the code and logic for that before actually putting on the robot. So for example, when we added that elevator, we could write all of the code for moving the elevator out of the way from the pivot so that it wouldn't crash into each other. We thought we could write just all of that code before we even actually had the elevator on, on, on the robot. So as they were building that and putting it on, we could test all that code and we could see this works, this doesn't. Once we find that out, we have a, lot, a much higher confidence that that'll actually work on the robot. That pivot, same thing. Before that was even on the robot, we wrote all of the code for it. All of these mechanisms we could write the code for before we actually had them. Uh, so that simulator is pretty great for that stuff like that. It lets us test autonomouses without having to pray. We can just see that they'll work, <laughs> which is great. Those lights, same thing. We wrote all the code for that before we even had the lights on there. So that really speeds up our development and lets us have confidence that things will work before we actually put it on there and crash into a wall. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very much for the insight. Uh, once again, this has been 4451 Robots Garage. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support.